Koka mi Marsin and A with circumflex A with circumflex, Ottoman Turkish, Modern Turkish, Mimar Sinan, pronounced Mi Masinan, Sinan the architect, C1489-1490 July 17, 1588, was the chief Ottoman architect, Turkish, Mimar, and civil engineer for Sultan Suleiman the Magnificent, Salim II, and Murad III. He was responsible for the construction of more than 300 major structures and other more modest projects, such as his Islamic primary schools, Sibian Mektibs. His apprentices would later design the Sultan Ahmed Mosque in Istanbul, Sturi Most in Mostar, and help design the Taj Mahal in the Mughal Empire. The son of a stonemason, he received a technical education and became a military engineer. He rose rapidly through the ranks to become first an officer and finally a Janissari commander, with the honorific title of AA. He refined his architectural and engineering skills while on campaign with the Janissaries, becoming expert at constructing fortifications of all kinds, as well as military infrastructure projects, such as roads, bridges, and aqueducts. At about the age of 50, he was appointed as chief royal architect, applying the technical skills he had acquired in the army to the creation of fine religious buildings and civic structures of all kinds. He remained in this post for almost 50 years. His masterpiece is the Salimiyye Mosque in Edirne, although his most famous work is the Suleiman Mosque in Istanbul. He headed an extensive governmental department and trained many assistants who, in turn, distinguished themselves, including Sedefkar Mermdaga, architect of the Sultan Ahmed Mosque. He is considered the greatest architect of the classical period of Ottoman architecture, and has been compared to Michelangelo, his contemporary in the West backslash Michelangelo and his plans for St. Peter's Basilica in Rome were well known in Istanbul, since Leonardo da Vinci and he had been invited, in 1502 and 1505 respectively, by the Sublime Port to submit plans for a bridge spanning the Golden Horn. According to contemporary biographer, Mustafa Saisalevi, Sinan was born in 1489, c. 1490 according to the Encyclopedia Britannica, 1491 according to the Dictionary of Islamic Architecture and sometime between 1494 and 1499, according to the Turkish professor and architect Ria Gunay, with the name Joseph. He was born either an Armenian, Cappadocian Greek, Albanian, or a Christian Turk in a small town called Arnas near the city of Kayseri in Anatolia, as stated in an order by Sultan Selim II. One argument that lends credence to his Armenian or Greek background is a decree by Selim II dated Ramadan 7981, ca. December 30, 1573, which grants Sinan's request to forgive and spare his relatives from the general exile of Kayseri's Armenian communities to the island of Cyprus, while Godfrey Goodwin stated that after the Ottoman conquest of Cyprus in 1571, when Selim II decided to repopulate the island by transferring rum, Orthodox Christian, families from the Karaman Islet, Sinan intervened on behalf of his family and obtained two orders from the Sultan in council exempting them from deportation. According to Herbert J. Muller he seems to have been an Armenian though it is almost a criminal offence in Turkey today to mention this probability. Lucy Dermanulian of Tufts University suggests that he can be identified as an Armenian through a document in the imperial archives and other evidence. The scholars who support the thesis of his Cappadocian Greek background have identified his father as a stonemason and carpenter by the name of Christos, Greek Cairo Sigma Tau Omicron, a common Greek name. It is certain that both his parents were of the Eastern Orthodox Christian faith, since the Ottoman archives of that epoch recorded only information about the religion of the population, as the concept of ethnicity was irrelevant to the religion-based Ottoman millet system. It is possible that his Orthodox Christian parents, father and mother, were of different ethnic backgrounds, as the areas near Arnas in the Sanjak of Kayseri, corresponding to the present-day Kayseri province, within the Karaman Islet of the Ottoman Empire had a large community of Greeks and Armenians during the Ottoman period, and intermarriages were not uncommon. 
several scholars have cited Sinan's possible Albanian origin. According to the British scholar Percy Brown and the Indian scholar Vidyadhar Mahajan, the Mughal Emperor Babur was very dissatisfied from the local Indian architecture and planning, thus he invited certain pupils of the leading Ottoman architect Sinan, the Albanian genius, to carry out his architectural schemes. Sinan, Joseph, grew up helping his father in his work, and by the time that he was conscripted would have had a good grounding in the practicalities of building work 7 there are three brief records in the library of the Topkap Palace, dictated by Sinan to his friend Mustafa Sisalevi. Anonymous text, architectural masterpieces, book of architecture. In these manuscripts, Sinan divulges some details of his youth and military career. His father is mentioned as Abdul Menon. Military career. In 1512, Sinan was conscripted into Ottoman service under the Devsherm system. He was sent to Constantinople to be trained as an officer of the Janissari Corps and converted to Islam. He was too old to be admitted to the Imperial Enderun School in the Topkap Palace but was sent instead to an auxiliary school. Some records claim that he might have served the Grand Vizier Pargal Brahim Pasha as a novice of the Ibrahim Pasha school. Possibly, he was given the Islamic name Sinan there. He initially learned carpentry and mathematics but through his intellectual qualities and ambitions, he soon assisted the leading architects and got his training as an architect. During the next six years, he also trained to be a Janissari officer, a Simeolan. He possibly joined Salimai in his last military campaign, Rhodes according to some sources, but when the Sultan died, this project ended. Two years later he witnessed the conquest of Belgrade. Under the new Sultan, Suleiman the Magnificent, he was present, as a member of the household cavalry, at the Battle of Mohax. He was promoted to captain of the Royal Guard and then given command of the Infantry Cadet Corps. He was later stationed in Austria, where he commanded the 62nd Orda of the Rifle Corps. He became a master of archery, while at the same time, as an architect, learning the weak points of structures when gunning them down. In 1535 he participated in the Baghdad campaign as a commanding officer of the Royal Guard. In 1537 he went on expeditions to Corfu and Apulia and Moldavia. During these campaigns he proved himself an able architect and engineer. When the Ottoman army captured Cairo, Sinan was promoted to chief architect and was given the privilege of tearing down any buildings in the captured city that were not according to the city plan. During the campaign in the east, he assisted in the building of defenses and bridges, such as a bridge across the Danube. He converted churches into mosques. During the Persian campaign in 1535 he built ships for the army and the artillery to cross Lake Van. For this he was given the title Hasakii, sergeant at arms in the bodyguard of the Sultan, a rank equivalent to that of the Janissari AA. When Chalevi Lutfi Pasha became Grand Vizier in 1539, he appointed Sinan, who had previously served under his command, to the office of architect of the abode of Felicity. This was the start of a remarkable career. The job entailed the supervision infrastructure construction and the flow of supplies within the Ottoman Empire. He was also responsible for the design and construction of public works, such as roads, waterworks, and bridges. Through the years he transformed his office into that of architect of the empire, an elaborate government department, with greater powers than his supervising minister. He became the head of a whole corps of architects, training a team of assistants, deputies, and pupils. Work His training as an army engineer gave Sinan an empirical approach to architecture rather than a theoretical one. But the same can be said of the great Western Renaissance architects, such as Brunelleschi and Michelangelo. Various sources state that Sinan was the architect of at least 374 structures which included 92 mosques, 52 small mosques, Mesut, 55 schools of theology, Midres, 7 schools for Quran reciters, Darulkura, 20 mausoleums, Turb, 17 public kitchens, Imarit, 3 hospitals, Darusifa, 6 aqueducts, 
10 bridges, 20 caravanserais, 36 palaces and mansions, 8 vaults, and 48 baths. Sinan held the position of chief architect of the palace, which meant being the overseer of all construction work of the Ottoman Empire, for nearly 50 years, working with a large team of assistants consisting of architects and master builders. The development and maturing stages of Sinan's career can be illustrated by three major works. The first two of these are in Istanbul, the Said Mosque, which he calls a work of his apprenticeship period and he Suleimaniye Mosque, which is the work of his qualification stage. The Salimiye Mosque in Adirna is the product of his master stage. Said Mosque is the first of the grand mosques created by Sinan. The Mirama Sultan Mosque, which is also known as the Uskadarki Mosque, was completed in the same year and has an original design with its main dome supported by three half domes. When Sinan reached the age of 70, he had completed the Suleimani Yi Mosque complex. This building, situated on one of the hills of Istanbul facing the Golden Horn, and built in the name of Suleiman the Magnificent, is one of the symbolic monuments of the period. The diameter of the dome, which exceeds the 31 m, 102 feet, of the Salimiye Mosque which Sinan completed when he was 80, is the most outstanding example of the level of achievement reached by Sinan. Memar Sinan reached his artistic peak with the design, architecture, tile decorations and land stone workmanship displayed at Salimiye. Another area of architecture where Sinan produced unique designs are his mausoleums. The mausoleum of Said Mermd is notable for with its exterior decorations and sliced dome clarification needed the Rustem Pasa mausoleum is a very attractive structure in classical style. The mausoleum of Suleiman the Magnificent is an interesting experiment, with an octagonal body and flat dome. The Salim II mausoleum with has a square plan and is one of the best examples of Turkish mausoleum architecture. Sinan's own mausoleum, which is located in the northeast part of the Suleimaniye complex on the other hand, is a very plain structure. Sinan masterfully combined art with functionalism in the bridges he built. The largest of these is the nearly 635 m, 2,083 feet, long Biuksekmis bridge. Other important examples are the Alevri Bridge, the Old Bridge in Svilengrad on the Maritza, the Lulaburgaz, Sakola Mehmet Pasha, Bridge on the Lulaburgaz River, the Sinanel Bridge over the River Urgeni and the Dina Bridge. While Sinan was maintaining and improving the water supply system of Istanbul, he built arched aqueducts at several locations within the city. The Malava Arch over the Alabay River, which is 257 m, 843 feet, long and 35 m, 115 feet, 35 meters high, has two tiers of arches, and is one of the best examples of its kind. At the start of Sinan's career, Ottoman architecture was highly pragmatic. Buildings were repetitions of former types and were based on rudimentary plans. They were more an assembly of parts than a conception of a whole. An architect could sketch a plan for a new building and an assistant or foreman knew what to do, because novel ideas were avoided. Moreover, architects used an extravagant margin of safety in their designs, resulting in a wasteful use of material and labor. Sinan would gradually change all this. He was to transform established architectural practices, amplifying and transforming the traditions by adding innovations, trying to approach perfection. The early years, till the mid-1550s, apprenticeship period. During these years he continued the traditional pattern of Ottoman architecture, but he gradually began exploring other possibilities, because during his military career he had had the opportunity to study the architectural monuments in the conquered cities of Europe and the Middle East. His first opportunity to design a major building was the Husrev Pasha Mosque and its double madras in Aleppo, Syria. It was built in the winter of 1536 to 1537 for his commander-in-chief and the governor of Aleppo between two army campaigns. It was built hastily and this is evident in the coarseness of execution and the crude decoration. His first major commission as the royal architect was the construction of a modest Hasaki Hurum complex for Roxlana, Hurem Sultan, the wife of the Sultan, Suleiman the Magnificent. He had to follow the plans drawn by his predecessors. 
Sinan retained the traditional arrangement of the available space without any innovations. Nevertheless it was already better built than the Aleppo Mosque and it shows a certain elegance. However, it has suffered from many restorations. Sinan is credited to have built a defensive tower in Vlore, South Albania, in 1537, very similar to the White Tower of Thessaloniki, as well as Muradi Mosque, during Suleiman the Magnificent's stay in the town for the preparation of his expedition towards Italy. In 1541, he started the construction of the mausoleum, Turb, of the Grand Admiral Hairdin Barbarossa. It stands on the shore of Besiktas on the European part of Istanbul, at the site where his fleet used to assemble. Oddly enough, the admiral is not buried there, but in his turb next to the Ischiel Mosque. This mausoleum has been severely neglected since then. Mirama Sultana, the only daughter of Suleiman and wife of the Grand Vizier Rustem Pasha gave Sinan the commission to build a mosque with madres, college, an emirate, soup kitchen, and a Sibian Mektab, current school, in Uskadar. The emirate no longer exists. This Ischiel Mosque, or Jedi Mosque, already shows several hallmarks of Sinan's mature style, a spacious, high-vaulted basement, slender minarets, single-domed baldacchino, flanked by three semi-domes ending in three exedri and a broad double portico. The construction was finished in 1548. The construction of a double portico was not a first in Ottoman architecture, but it set a trend for country mosques and mosques of viziers in particular. Rustem Pasha and Miramar required them later in their three mosques in Constantinople and in the Rustem Pasha Mosque in Tekirda. The inner portico traditionally have stalactite capitals while the outer portico has capitals with chevron patterns, baklava. When Sultan Suleiman the Magnificent returned from another Balkan campaign, he received news that his heir to the throne as Aid Mehmed had died at the age of 22. In November 1543, not long after Sinan had started the construction of the Ischiel Mosque, the Sultan ordered Sinan to build a new major mosque with an adjoining complex in memory of his favorite son. This Said Mosque would become larger and more ambitious than his previous ones. Architectural historians consider this mosque as Sinan's first masterpiece. Obsessed by the concept of a large central dome, Sinan turned to the plans of mosques such as the Feta Pasha Mosque in Diyarbakir or the Piri Pasha Mosque in Haskoi. He must have visited both mosques during his Persian campaign. Sinan built a mosque with a central dome, this time with four equal half domes. This superstructure is supported by four massive, but still elegant, freestanding octagonal fluted piers and four piers incorporated in each lateral wall. In the corners, above roof level, four turrets serve as stabilizing anchors. This coherent concept already is markedly different from the additive plans of traditional Ottoman architecture. Sedefkar Mermd Aga would later copy the concept of fluted piers in his Sultan Ahmed Mosque in an attempt to lighten their appearance. Sinan, however, rejected this solution in his next mosques. By 1550, Suleiman the Magnificent was at the height of his powers. Having built a mosque for his son, he felt it was time to construct his own imperial mosque, an enduring monument larger than all the others, to be built on a gently sloping hillside dominating the Golden Horn. Money was no problem, since he had accumulated a treasure from the loot of his campaigns in Europe and the Middle East. He gave the order to Sinan to build a mosque, the Suleimani Yi, surrounded by a kulai consisting of four colleges, a soup kitchen, a hospital, an asylum, a hammam, a caravanserai, and a hospice for travelers, Tubhain. Sinan, now heading a formidable department with a great number of assistants, finished this formidable task in seven years. Before Suleimani Yi, no mosques had been built with half-cubic roofs. He got the idea of half-cubic roof design from the Hagia Sophia. Through this monumental according to whom, achievement, Sinan emerged from the anonymity of his predecessors. Sinan must have known the ideas of the Renaissance architect Leon Battista Alberti, who in turn had studied the architecture by the Roman architect and engineer Vitruvius, since he too was concerned in building the ideal church, 
reflecting harmony through the perfection of geometry in architecture. But, contrary to his Western counterparts, Sinan was more interested in simplification than in enrichment. He tried to achieve the largest volume under a single central dome. The dome is based on the circle, the perfect geometrical figure representing, in an abstract way, a perfect god. Sinan used subtle geometric relationships, using multiples of two when calculating the ratios and the proportions of his buildings. However, in a later stage, he also used divisions of three or ratios of two to three when working out the width and the proportions of domes, such as the Sokalu Mehmet Pasha Mosque at Kadraga. While he was fully occupied with the construction of the Suleimani Yi, Sinan, or his subordinates drew up the plans and gave instructions for many other constructions. Sinan built a mosque for the Grand Vizier Pargal Brahim Pasha and a mausoleum, Turb, at Salivarkap, Constantinople, in 1551. The next Grand Vizier, Rustem Pasha gave Sinan several more commissions. In 1550 he built a large inn, Han, in the Galata district of Istanbul. About ten years later he built another Han in Adirna, and between 1544 and 1561 the Tahan at Erzurum. He designed a caravanserai in Aragli and an octagonal madrasa in Constantinople. Between 1553 and 1555, Sinan built the Sinan Pasha Mosque at Besiktas, a smaller version of the UC Serfli Mosque at Adirna, for the Grand Admiral Sinan Pasha. This proves again that Sinan had thoroughly studied the work of other architects, especially since he was responsible for the upkeep of these buildings. He copied the old form, pondered over the weaknesses in the construction and tried to solve this with his own solution. In 1554, Sinan used the form of the Sinan Pasha Mosque again for the construction of the mosque for the next Grand Vizier Kara Ahmed Pasha in Constantinople, his first hexagonal mosque. By using a hexagonal plan, Sinan could reduce the side domes to half domes and set them in the corners at an angle of 45 degrees. Clearly, Sinan must have appreciated this form citation needed since he repeated it later in mosques such as the Sokalumurmd Pasha Mosque at Kadraga and the Attic Valide Mosque at Uskadar. In 1556, Sinan built the Hasaki Huram Hammam, replacing the antique baths of Zyuxippus, which are still standing close to the Hagia Sophia. This would become one of the most beautiful hammams he ever constructed. In 1559, he built the Café Aa Madrasa below the forecourt of the Hagia Sophia. In the same year he began the construction of a small mosque for Iskender Pasha at Kanlka, beside the Bosphorus. This was one of the many minor and routine commissions the office of Sinan received over the years. Possibly Mimar Sinan, left, at the tomb of Suleiman the Magnificent, 1566. In 1561, when Rustem Pasha died, Sinan began the construction of the Rustem Pasha Mosque, as a memorial supervised by his widow Mirama Sultana. It is situated just below the Suleimani Yi. This time the central form is octagonal, modeled on the monastery church of Saints Sergius and Bacchus, with four small semi-domes set in the corners. In the same year, Sinan built a turb for Rustem Pasha in the garden of the Said Mosque, decorated with the finest tiles as Nick could produce. Mirama Sultana, having doubled her wealth after the death of her husband, now wanted a mosque of her own. Sinan built the Mirama Kamii at Eterna Cap, Eterna Gate, for her on the highest of the seven hills of Constantinople. He raised the mosque on a vaulted platform, accentuating its hill topside. There is some speculation concerning the dates, until recently this was supposed to be between 1540 and 1540, but now it is generally accepted to be between 1562 and 1565. Sinan, concerned with grandeur, built a mosque in one of his most imaginative designs, using new support systems and lateral spaces to increase the area available for windows. He built a central dome 37m, 121 feet, 
high and 20 m, 66 feet, wide, supported by pendentives, on a square base with two lateral galleries, each with three cupolas. At each corner of this square stands a gigantic pier, connected with immense arches each with 15 large windows and four circular ones, flooding the interior with light. The style of this revolutionary building was as close to the Gothic style as Ottoman structure permits. Between 1560 and 1566 Sinan built a mosque in Constantinople for Zulmamud Pasha on a hillside beyond Ivansare. Sinan certainly conceived the plans and partly supervised the construction, but left the building of lesser areas to less than competent hands, since Sinan and his most able assistants were about to begin his masterpiece, the Salimiyi Mosque in Adirna. On the outside, the mosque rises high, with its east wall pierced by four tiers of windows. This gives the mosque an aspect of a palace or even a block of apartments. Inside, there are three broad galleries making the interior look compact. The heaviness of this structure makes the dome look unexpectedly lofty. These galleries look like a preliminary tryout for the galleries of the Salimiyi Mosque. The period from 1570 to his death, master stage. In this late stage of his life, Sinan tried to create unified and sublimely elegant interiors. To achieve this, he eliminated all the unnecessary subsidiary spaces beyond the supporting piers of the central dome. This can be seen in the Sokalu Mehmet Pasa Mosque in Istanbul, 1571-1572, and in the Salimiyi Mosque in Adirna. In other buildings of his final period, Sinan experimented with spatial and mural treatments that were new in the classical Ottoman architecture. According to him from his autobiography Tezkiretu El Bunyan, his masterpiece is the Salimiyi Mosque in Adirna. Breaking free of the handicaps of traditional Ottoman architecture, this mosque marks the climax of Sinan's work and of all classical Ottoman architecture. While it was being built, the architect's saying of you can never build a dome larger than the dome of Hagia Sophia and specially as Muslims was his main motivation. When it was completed, Sinan claimed that it had the largest dome in the world, leaving Hagia Sophia behind. In fact, the dome height from the ground level was lower and the diameter barely larger, 0.5 meters, approximately 2 feet, than the millennium-older Hagia Sophia. However, measured from its base the dome of Salimiyi is higher. Sinan was more than 80 years old when the building was finished. In this mosque he finally realized his aim of creating the optimum, completely unified, domed interior, a triumph of space that dominates the interior. He used this time an octagonal central dome, 31.28 m wide and 42 m high, supported by eight elephantine piers of marble and granite. These supports lack any capitals but have squinches or consoles at their summit, leading to the optical effect that the arches seem to grow integrally out of the piers. By placing the lateral galleries far away, he increased the three-dimensional effect. The many windows in the screen walls flood the interior with light. The buttressing semi-domes are set in the four corners of the square under the dome. The weight and the internal tensions are hidden, producing an airy and elegant effect rarely seen under a central dome. The four minarets, 83 m high, at the corners of the prayer hall are the tallest in the Muslim world, accentuating the vertical posture of this mosque that already dominates the city. He also designed the Takiyya al Sulaymani Yakan and Mosque in Damascus, still considered one of the city's most notable monuments, as well as the Banya Bashi Mosque in Sofia, Bulgaria, currently the only functioning mosque in the city. He has also built Mermd Pasokolovic Bridge in Vigrid across the Dina River in the east of Bosnia and Herzegovina which is now UNESCO World Heritage Site. Conclusion At the start of his career as an architect, Sinan had to deal with an established, traditional domed architecture. His training as an army engineer led him to approach architecture from an empirical point of view, rather than from a theoretical one. He started to experiment with the design and engineering of single-domed and multiple-domed structures. He tried to obtain a new geometrical purity, a rationality and a spatial integrity in his structures and designs of mosques. Through all this, 
he demonstrated his creativity and his wish to create a clear, unified space. He started to develop a series of variations on the domes, surrounding them in different ways with semi-domes, piers, screen walls, and different sets of galleries. His domes and arches are curved, but he avoided curvilinear elements in the rest of his design, transforming the circle of the dome into a rectangular, hexagonal, or octagonal system. He tried to obtain a rational harmony between the exterior pyramidal composition of semi-domes, culminating in a single drumless dome, and the interior space where this central dome vertically integrates the space into a unified whole. His genius lies in the organization of this space and in the resolution of the tensions created by the design. He was an innovator in the use of decoration and motifs, merging them into the architectural forms as a whole. He accentuated the center underneath the central dome by flooding it with light from the many windows. He incorporated his mosques in an efficient way into a complex, kulai, serving the needs of the community as an intellectual center, a community center and serving the social needs and the health problems of the faithful. When Sinan died, classical Ottoman architecture had reached its climax. No successor was gifted enough to better the design of the Salimiyye Mosque and to develop it further. His students retreated to earlier models, such as the Said Mosque. Invention faded away, and a decline set in. Constructions His most important piece of architecture was Masjid al-Haram. During his tenure during 50 years of the post of imperial architect, Sinan is said to have constructed or supervised 476 buildings, 196 of which still survive, according to the official list of his works, the Tajgarat Halabni Ya. He could not possibly have designed them all, but he relied on the skills of his office. He took credit and the responsibility for their work. For, as a Janissari, and thus a slave of the Sultan, his primary responsibility was to the Sultan. In his spare time, he also designed buildings for the chief officials. He delegated to his assistants the construction of less important buildings in the provinces. He died in 1588 and is buried in a tomb in Istanbul, a turb of his own design, in the cemetery just outside the walls of the Suleymaniye Mosque to the north, across a street named Mimar Sinan Kadisi in his honor. He was buried near the tombs of his greatest patrons, Sultan Suleiman I and Sultana Hasaki Huram, Suleiman's wife. His name is also given to a crater on the planet Mercury. A Turkish state university, the Mimar Sinan University of Fine Arts in Istanbul. Sinan's portrait was depicted on the reverse of the Turkish 10,000 lira banknotes of 1982 to 1995.